So how do we measure these surface temperatures? Well, probably the most common uh, when you think of measuring a temperature would be what we call a liquid thermometer, in which case you have uh, either more now uh, alcohol, but used to be old timey, these liquid thermometers had mercury in them. And as the liquid heated up, it expanded and it went up the, the length of the thermometer and showed you a warmer temperature. Um, another type of measure, temperature measuring device actually makes use of the fact that different types of metal will expand and contract at different temperatures. And this is kind of a, this, <clears throat> this sort of thermometer to me does a good job like out in a factory or something like that. Um, then the last type of thermometer I have listed here is actually makes use of the fact that um, electricity will conduct differently um, as a wire experiences different temperatures. Electrical conductivity will differ. So um, that's the that's a very common type of thermometer used out in in, uh, in factories as well. So this is uh, the liquid in a glass thermometer where down here you have either alcohol or mercury and as it heats up then the liquid will expand and it will go up that stem. Come back here. It will go up that stem and notice here it, uh, you read the temperature. <laughs> um, the liquid uh, in, a, in glass thermometers, actually, it's kind of cool because you can capture a high temperature and a low temperature like this, where if you have a special uh, liquid in a glass thermometer that has a break here, um, it will, uh, how do I say this? <laughs> um, it will record the maximum temperature. Um, and then even if it cools down, what happens is this restriction does not allow the material to flow back into the bulb. So it has captured the maximum temperature. Uh, this one will capture the minimum temperature. And the way this works is it has like a little floating thing marked here as an index. And it will, uh, it will kind of uh, float. It will stay at the lowest temperature. And even though the current temperature you here see here is 75, the float still recorded the lowest temperature. And these uh, liquid um, in glass thermometers can be can be reset then after they've captured the daily max or the daily min. It's kind of neat. This one is that uh, where this metal has <coughs> will expand and contract at different temperatures, and as it expands and contracts, it wiggles right here. It kind of looks like a mousetrap, doesn't it? And actually it will ultimately then move this lever right here and at the end of this lever is a um, marker and notice it's marked, this is paper right here, and it's marking um, the temperature. It can go up and down and then of course, well maybe not of course, this barrel that has paper on it moves. So a little bit ago when we saw a thermograph um, daily temperatures or day thermograph showing the cycle of temperatures throughout the day. Um, this is kind of like what it was taken on. And then hidden in here is that uh, ther therm thermistor um, that, oops, sorry, go back, that basically uh, <coughs> depending upon the temperature that the probe is experiencing it will its thermal conductivity will change and that resistivity or conductivity is translated um, to a temperature corresponding temperature and this is really uh, kind of a nice sort of um, thing that can just kind of uh, low maintenance I guess was the word I was after so speaking of maintenance this is uh, maybe a typical shelter that you would go ahead and put your temperature measuring device in it. Uh, notice that it's ventilated <coughs> with louvers and notice also that it's painted white so it's not absorbing thermal radiation. So I just kind of wanted to give you a, the quick rundown of um, three temperature scales. 
Uh, you might be most familiar with the Fahrenheit temperature scale, and to kind of uh, kind of give you some uh, important markers with regard to water on the Fahrenheit temperature scale, we know water will boil at 212 and it will freeze at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And I bet you've heard of the Celsius temperature scale. Um, the, again, water will boil at 100 degrees Celsius and it will freeze at zero degrees Celsius. And <clears throat> I don't have you do it in this class, but you can go back and forth between Fahrenheit and Celsius. It's not a straight, um, what we call factor label or ratio sort of problem, but you may have done this before. For instance, if you have the Celsius temperature, what you do is you multiply it by 1.8, you add 32, and that will be your Fahrenheit temperature. If you have the Fahrenheit temperature, from that you subtract 32, you divide by 1.8, and you have the Celsius temperature. A third temperature scale, and actually this is the one that's most important to um, <coughs> physical science, would be the Kelvin temperature scale. It's otherwise referred to as the absolute temperature scale because it has something, it's zero unit on the Kelvin temperature scale is what we call absolute zero. And absolute zero is the lowest temperature that is ever possible and we nothing has ever been cooled down to absolute zero because at absolute zero um, all motion stops and by definition in this universe anyway all motion excuse me all matter has motion so you can't stop you, the molecular motion entirely so um, what's most easy is to go back and forth between um, Celsius and Kelvin because the units are the same, so one unit on the Celsius scale is the same as one unit on the Kelvin scale. So if you, for instance, if you have the Celsius temperature and you want the Kelvin temperature, all you got to do is add 273.15, excuse me, 273.15. If you have the Kelvin temperature and you want to convert it to Celsius, all you got to do is subtract 273.15 units. So this is just kind of showing you side by side um, the three temperature scales. Notice at the top here, the first column is uh, Fahrenheit temperature, the second column degree Celsius, and the third column uh, Kelvin. And so, you know, we talked about how the important parts, points of water freezing, zero Celsius, uh, where's my pen? Right here, water freezing, zero Celsius, 32 degrees. Um, Fahrenheit and it corresponds to 273.15 units on the Kelvin scale. Uh, water boiling up here at the top. Uh, 212 Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius, and 373 Kelvin. So kind of marked <coughs> here are a few uh, kind of a uh, record or important <coughs> temperatures. Uh, for instance, I think we saw this earlier that the worldwide, uh, the world record high temperature was 136 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I don't have the world record low here, but just to kind of um, connect maybe Fahrenheit and Celsius if you're not used to doing that, 72 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a nice comfortable room temperature, uh, would be 22 degrees Celsius. Uh, before we leave this, I did want to kind of point out, and I'm not going to take you there, but Google, if uh, Google is great for doing all sorts of conversions. If you haven't, if you didn't know that, I just want to point it out there. Um, in fact, I've used it recently um, to show students who need to convert lengths. Like if you go to Google and in the search bar you say convert 500 centimeters to inches, um, it will do that.